and I want to spend some time today talking about uh, various techniques that we use to monitor uh, cr uh, row crops and, and other situations for insect pressure. We have several different methods that I want to show today. Um, each one of them is used specifically for different insects. And the first one I want to sh uh, demonstrate is what we call um, using a sweep net. Um, the, the key to using a sweep net is to grip it uh, so that you have a good firm grip on it and you take a, a sweep um, across your body, you turn that sweep net 180 degrees and you come back the opposite way. So you're continually sweeping back and forth, turning that net so that whatever is going to be uh, captured in the bag uh, whatever's going to be, uh, wh whatever's out in the field would be captured in the bag as you're sweeping along. And you uh, walk along, um, you don't stop in one place and sweep, you keep walk along in a transect in different areas sweeping. Well, we're in an alfalfa field and I'm going to demonstrate the proper technique for sweep netting. Typically we take 30 sweeps in a, a sample um, and, and then take counts of whatever we've caught in the, in the bag. So I'm going to start showing you how we go about doing it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, twenty, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Then flip the contents of the bag over the top so the insects don't escape. Take it and grab it so that nothing escapes there. And then you can start looking to see what you've captured and take counts of whatever insect pests that you're interested in looking for. You'll probably also have a lot of natural enemies and other insects that are in there. But in this case, looks like we've got a lot of three-cornered alfalfa hopper and some caterpillars. And then a lot of other insects that we're not concerned about. This is a pheromone trap that we use to monitor moth flights uh, in different areas. It's a way to allow uh, for us to uh, have a system in place so we can tell when moths are coming in and it will alert then a, a grower or a consultant as to when a flight is occurring so they can focus their time on scouting fields when the, there's a lot of insect activity. This is basically set up to be uh, a trap that's baited with uh, what we call a pheromone that attracts, uh, specifically attracts a certain species, you know, whatever species of insect or uh, moth you're interested in. Um, it attracts them into the trap and then they get caught on um, a paper like this, a grid paper that has a lot of sticky material on top. So the moths actually get captured and stuck on this, um, this uh, paper. And then you can count on an and you come and check it as often as you want, but you can count every day and see how many moths you're capturing every day. Um, we have pheromones for fall armyworm, regular armyworm, uh, some of the soybean uh, pests like velvet bean caterpillar. You can pretty much get a pheromone for just about any moth uh, uh, caterpillar pest that you want to deal with in, in your row crops. So we set it up. This is called a delta trap. We set it up, we put the sticky card inside the trap, and it already has the pheromone that's hanging from the top. So we, we set it in um, and close it up like that, and it's protected from rain. And then all we have to do is have a place to hang it. In this case, we're going to hang it right here. And it will sit there and do some counting for us. We don't have to be there watching what's going on. It will capture those. This works really well because a lot of moths fly at night, so you don't really know what kind of uh, uh, flights are occurring because most of them occur at night. So this is a good way to kind of determine uh, when that flight's occurring. You can then use that information to say, oh, we see a fall armyworm flight that's occurring right now. We need to get out and look at our fields right now and make sure that uh, that they're, if they're laying eggs, we get kind of an early, early alert as to when they're when they're out and being active. 
The next technique that I want to demonstrate is the proper use of a beet sheet. Beet sheets are very useful in crops that are planted in rows. Uh, in this case we have some soybean that are planted in 30 inch rows. Uh, they can be used in cotton. Uh, basically any crop uh, that's planted in rows where we can dislodge the pests onto the ground and uh, be able to take counts. So what this involves is using a sheet uh, that, that has a couple handles on each side, opening it up, and it's, in this case it's marked uh, in square foot rows, and we just uh, place it in between the rows and, and, and unfold it and then knock all the insects that are feeding on those plants in that particular area onto the ground where we can take counts of them. In, in some crops, particularly soybeans, uh, they're host to several different caterpillars and they all cause the same kind of damage. Um, they, they chew the leaves and cause defoliation. So instead of counting individual caterpillars, a lot of times we estimate their activity based upon the amount of defoliation that is occurring uh, on that soybean plant. That requires that the, the scout or the, the sampler uh, be able to do two things. First of all, to accurately estimate the amount of defoliation that he's seeing on an individual trifoliate. And number two, making sure that you take representative samples from the lower, middle, and top of the canopy because uh, sometimes insects like to prefer to feed in one area, but there's leaves on the bottom that can compensate. One of the things about soybeans is that they're very good at compensating for some defoliation. And the amount of uh, ability to compensate depends on their growth stage. Uh, for example, when they're in the vegetative growth stage before they've started flowering, they uh, can withstand a, a much larger amount of defoliation than when they're starting to flower and set pods. Then that uh, amount of defoliation that, that uh, we use as a trigger, a threshold for treatment, is much lower than it would be at vegetative stage. The next technique that I want to demonstrate is what, something we call the shake bucket technique. It's used in crops like sorghum where they have a, a merged panicle and we're interested in monitoring insects that feed on the seeds on that panicle. Things like the sorghum headworm or stink bugs. It involves basically taking the head, uh, placing it into the, the bucket, banging it against the side, knocking, dislodging all the insects that are on that plant and taking a count after we take uh, 30 samples. 30, uh, we examine 30 heads and then we can determine what kind of threshold we have and whether we need to treat or not. After we've done taking our samples, uh, in this case we had 20 caterpillars in, in our sample, so that would give us an indication whether we needed to treat this field or not for sorghum headworms. Um, the key though is to, when you're taking samples like this to make sure you take a representative sample all the way through the field so that you're not biasing for those insects. A lot of times what we'll find is at the edge of a field there's more insect pressure than there is once you get into the field farther. So it's important to take a representative sample before you make that decision to treat or not. The next technique that I want to demonstrate is something that we call presence absence sampling. And in this case, we're going to use it, I'm going to demonstrate it uh, with sugarcane aphid counts on sorghum. And in this case, what we've also determined is that we had to develop a, what we call a tally threshold. If we're going to look at presence absence, we have to have a, a specific number that we say that it either is above or below that number so that we will keep track of those leaves that, uh, um, that, ha that are above that tally threshold. And in the case of sugarcane aphid, we've come up with 50 per leaf. So when we go out and sample a sorghum field, the first thing that we need to do is take a leaf from the lower part of the plant and the upper part of the plant. And uh, we determine whether that uh, leaf has uh, that number of aphids or not. Now in this case, we are definitely above the that tally threshold. There's probably um, 800, to 800 or more aphids on this particular leaf. Uh, the other leaf that I picked on a lower part of the plant has zero. So 
we would count this one as infested and this one as not infested and then we'd move on to the next plant and take two more leaves and make that same kind of estimation of whether it's above or below 50 aphids per leaf. Uh, with sugarcane aphid, they're typically on the bottom side of the, uh, the leaf, so that's where we would probably focus our attention. And when we're done, we keep track of the number of leaves that are infested with more than 50 aphids per leaf, and that's what we use uh, to determine uh, whether we need to treat or not. The next technique that I want to demonstrate, for lack of a better term, is what I call the coat hanger sampling method. This can be used in a situation where you have caterpillars that feed on the ground, such as cutworms or armyworms, and you want to get an idea of how many you have per square foot. So what it, it, what it requires is finding a wire coat hanger, pulling it out so that it's in kind of a square like this, and then simply walking on the ground and placing it down. You get down on the ground and start digging through uh, and counting any caterpillars you find within the uh, boundary of that coat hanger. You have to look pretty carefully because sometimes the caterpillars are pretty small, but this gives you an idea, for, especially for ground uh, dwelling caterpillars in, in seedling wheat or in pasture, uh, you can take those counts, take samples in a bunch of different areas and determine whether you need to um, uh, figure out a way to treat that crop if you need to based upon uh, the thresholds that we have established.